Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's Friday, which means it's time for some Obscurities in Literature. Today we bring to you Super Sentai Himitsu Sentai Go Reinja. Yeah, I'll save you the karaoke today. Anyway, this is, according to the byline, the classic manga by Shotaro Ishinomori. Um... I think classic is giving it a bit of a stretch. Absolutely, it is a very important piece of uh, Japanese pop culture history. Uh, Shoto Ishinomori, if you're not familiar, is kind of the brains behind all of the major tokusatsu special effects live action rubber suit shows that started really the big boom in the 70s and have continued on to this day. You may know them, obviously, as the Power Rangers. This is where they came from, but also shows like Kamen Rider, shows like Kiter, more obscure stuff like Kyodine or, um, what is it, Gambare Robocon. Uh, he just, he really had his hands in a lot of different pots in the 70s especially, and I, this work is pure 70s Ishinomori. I'd say there's other manga that are probably more important that he's done, like Cyborg 009, or his hotel is a big one. Um, just, he's he was a very, very prolific artist, writer, creative type. Um, helped a lot of people get their start in the industry, got help from a lot of other famous artists, himself getting into the industry, um, and his artwork is very much a product of its time. So if you're not familiar with a lot of older manga, I mean, yeah, it's not as cutting edge, super clean, you know, just beautifully rendered stuff at a breakneck pace that some of the other artists are putting out there, you know, stuff like Muir was before his unfortunate passing, sadly, uh, but definitely Ishinomori was a major force to be reckoned with in terms of art and creativity. Uh, my first introduction to his work was actually probably with the old Legend of Zelda comics that he drew for Nintendo Power. Uh, I thought the style always looked really similar. Uh, I saw a lot of similarities between, you know, Cyborg 009 and some of the work in that Zelda book. And yeah, it turned out later on, I found out that you should have more enjoyed it. So anyway, Go Ranger. Go Ranger were the first of the Sentai teams. And obviously, from the very beginning, we had all of the various color-coded, numbered characters. And a lot of the tropes that we would find way back in 1974, I think, was when it first started filming. 75 might have been around the time it released. Um, this stuff was new and fresh. Uh, it's been quite a few years since. And I know with the current show that just started airing in Japan in the last few months, they have a very obvious throwback to the original series with uh, number 45 on the new guy's helmet rather than the number one. But why don't you check that out yourself? One thing I got to commend Seven Seas for just number one, the sheer fact that they're putting these books out. Uh, I mean, I don't know, it's probably me and whoever's watching this that's still interested in old school manga. I, I think there's definitely some value and merit to still reading this stuff. But number two, uh, with such a nice presentation, nice, good binding, thick hardcover, nice colors, nice paper. Uh, in the back we have a nice explanation for a lot of the gags and just little pop culture bits that are going on there in the story, how they translated them, why they translated them a certain way. So that is appreciated. I dig that. And then we get a little bit on background info on what's going on here. It's basically two main stories with a quick little sidebar. And, okay, yeah, I was right, 1975. So they go into all this and explain a little bit about where they were going with it. And just right from the beginning, you can tell the hero is absolutely a Ishinomori protagonist. One thing I always liked about this and most of his work, you know, we have these big two-page spreads or just action scenes. And that was definitely one of the nice points of the book. We have a lot of these big spreads with black crosses. They're trying to take over the world. We have a typical tragic backstory. Uh, 
And there's definitely a certain quality to the artwork. And I, I dig the vintage tech that's going on in a lot of this. Classic Sentai vehicles. Brooding Pretty Boy from the very beginning. Surprised he doesn't have a sharp, pointy beak nose like uh, some of the cyborgs do. Nicely rendered backgrounds. Curious who actually drew those. I'm sure that Ishinomori had some kind of studio setup going on there. Like I said, lots of action. Lots of splash pages. Nice use of angles. Action scenes look really good. I'm going to jump ahead to another story and not spoil everything. So like I said, I, I have a feeling that whoever was really behind a lot of these big splash pages, of which there are quite a few, somebody was just having fun drawing cool looking ships and explosions and, you know, scenes like that. Because later on in one of the other stories, we all of a sudden have a giant robot dinosaur that looks like it's something out of the dinosaur kingdom from Get a Robo, which was a you know, concurrent series running around that time. Again, big old splash pages, double splash. I think he was just looking for an excuse to draw what amounts to mecha porn. I mean, somebody was just really having a fun time here drawing explosions and, you know, fight scenes. Come on. I know, you guys. If I could draw at that kind of level, I'd be doing the same thing, too. It just looks cool. Who doesn't want to have cool-looking jets and monsters fighting everywhere? We'll save that for you. So then, some of the later stories in this are from when they started serializing it in a different magazine. So we have a bit of a change in the style of the story, which I don't want to spoil. Honestly, the villains in this book look so much better than they do in the actual original series. I'll show you guys some pictures in a sec. But again, just cool, dynamic, exciting looking action scenes. I especially dug the last story as I'm zipping ahead here uh, where they have a bunch of robots and one panel in particular, here we go, where we have what absolutely looks like Robocon. It has to be. I don't know what your Robocon came on TV and I, I thought that guy looks a bit like Black Ox, but the Tezuka influence is strong on these pages. But then again, you know, Ishinomori did start as an assistant to Tezuka way back when. So that's not surprising. That is totally... I mean, obviously we have the Robbie the Robot ripoff there, but that is totally Robocon. Even with the little swirly thing. I wonder if that had aired yet. I don't recognize any of the other robots. Maybe you guys do. So, a fun little bit of nostalgia, especially if you grew up watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I know I was secretly watching it with my younger brother. Sparkle Trout was probably in, I don't know, grade school, junior high? Young. And I was not, <laughs> but it gave me a good excuse to watch, and I was obviously very well aware at the time where the original footage was coming from. I hadn't really seen it, but it was a good excuse to watch giant you know, rubber suit monsters and robots battling it out and having explosions in the city. So here, let me show you guys some of the photos of the old original series, which I believe was airing concurrently at the time this came out. The stories don't match up exactly, but I don't know if there's like a big demand for the original Go Ranger stuff in English on DVD or Blu-ray. So, you know, I think this is probably going to be as close as we get to ever really experiencing any of this in its actual original form. So please forgive me, this is a woefully, woefully out of date uh, Super Sentai encyclopedia. Uh, it, this is like what, I think Hurricane Sure? That was like 2001, 2, 3. So there's a good 20 something 
more shows that were aired since this book came out. And then I believe this is supposed to be our main hero right here. But you just dig to the back. I'm trying to debate about picking up some of the old... I know Shout Factory, I think, or Discotech put out a bunch of Sentai DVDs a few years back. I can't make up my mind. Either Ginga Man or Mega Ranger or Go Go 5 or Jetman. It's mostly newer stuff. 90s stuff, I should say. Old Ranger, I don't know. If you guys have any of those DVD sets, let me know what's worth watching. I know he's having that conversation with Sparkle Trout about that. I love the smell of this book. I've had this for years and it still has that, I don't know, hobby mook smell to it. If you know what that means. It's like Roman albums. Dingy man. Look, look, high quality costumes. I dig this old stuff though. Maybe I'm weird like that. Battle Fever J, which is partly owned by Marvel Comics because of Captain America. I don't remember what the deal was. Chaka. All right, we're almost. Oh no, here's here's the original series. Here you can see all the original characters. Here is our pretty boy. Our fat guy. Our smart guy. I don't remember Yellow doing much in the book. And our hero. Our manly karate man. And Peggy Matsuyama. Momo Ranger. Just because of... Yeah. The connotations of that. So you can see here some of their gear that they actually used in the comic. We did have the boomerang for the Green Ranger. We have their Bariburum. I don't know what that is. The dog thingy. We didn't see any of the other funky vehicles. That would have been fun. Here's the Black Cross Kuroju Jigun. It's Mac tonight's evil brother. Various baddie vehicles and stuff. I don't know where the villains are from that book. There's some that look similar, I guess, but there's a ton of them. So, yeah, I got to get an updated version of this. And like I said, it's just cool that we actually have stuff like this getting translated professionally and brought over in such a nice format to the States. And I'm assuming the rest of the world, if people are as crazy and weird about old manga like I am, obviously. Uh, Seven Seas, like I said, does have a few other classic books like Devil Man. Um, Yamato, I don't know if they did 3.9, the Galaxy Express, I don't know. But we'll put a link down below anyways if you're curious to read this stuff, get a glimpse into the history of what kinds of craziness the 70s was concocting in Japan, and hopefully if you don't like this, I, I, I don't know what to tell you because this is some classic junk here. Anyways, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.